Hey guys, this is Joe. This is DJ. And we are here with the Ranger wrap up again, even though there was no episode. Oh. Who cares? We love talking about Power Rangers. We do this all the time. So uh, <laughs> this week, we're, well, here's what we're going to do this week. We're going to talk about Power Ranger news. Yep. We're going to give you another one of our lists. Yep. And we're going to be reading your questions and comments. Because we love you. And let's get to some of the news. I mean, we're going to top off the story. We, we'll get to this later, but obviously it's big story. The biggest news that's come out recently is... There's a new Yellow Ranger for Ninja Steel. But more yeah. on that later. Let's talk about some other things. Yeah. Number one thing I want to talk about, and you know this already, DJ, and you, you just got it. What's up? Boom Studios! Boom Studios! Trade, the, uh, the trade is out. Issues one through four. Also has issue zero in it. Issue zero. Please go pick it up. Support Boom Studios, because I want to see more Power Ranger comic books for my own greediness. Shout out to Kyle Higgins. Oh, Kyle, I interviewed him. Yes, he did. He's great. So awesome. here's, here's spoilers that might be coming up uh, for the comic book, is that the next story arc might take place in a different dimension. Which could be really interesting. Mm. So, issue six, oh. <laughs> issue six kind of touches on on where the story can be going, but we'll see. Have you read the comics yet? I'm not caught up. I, I have them. I am not caught up. Like I, I buy them and then I have them in a the stack, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna binge. I'm gonna binge. Okay, well you should. I recommend it. Yes. Pink Ranger number three also just came out last Wednesday. Go pick it up. Uh, the Pink Ranger series is really good. I we know that eventually we're gonna get a Red Ranger series. Nice with Jason. Yep which would be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's coming. Um, also, we got to talk about the pop vinyls are coming out. The, the yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. What, what's the company that makes these guys? The, uh, you know, Funko Pops, pop vinyls. We're going to get a metallic red, yep. metallic pink, yep. and Rita Repulsa. Make and those are going to be, grow. yes, and those are going to be Hot Topic exclusives. Yep. And the exclusive from Walmart is going to be? Alpha 5. Which I'm really looking for. I am super excited because I actually remember seeing the petitions for an Alpha yeah. 5 pop. And the fact that it's actually coming to fruition and we're getting it listed now, huge. Oh, I can't wait. Really, really cool. And anybody that's a collector of these pop vinyl figures, I, for sure you at least won't read an Alpha yeah, yeah, in your yeah. Power Ranger yeah. collection. I do. I personally do. And if you miss them, they go up in value so quick. Oh, like, yeah. I think it was uh, white and red and I forget, I forget which, but they're going for like 200 a pop now. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Funko Pops making that cheese. You know what I'm saying? Um, also big news, the Sentai. Yes. Power yes. Ranger Super Sentai has a new name for the new series, and it is... Uchu Sentai Q-Danger, which is our first Super Sentai space-themed Sentai. Uh, Toei just bought the trademark for, for that name, and not counting Mega Ranger. So before all of you are like, no, in space was a space theme. No. In Japan, Mega Ranger, our in space, was a video game season. Right. That's so... This is, if it is true. Have you seen Mega Ranger? I have. All right, now. And it's great. Okay, so uh, I know these are two different shows, That's cool. but which one, if you had to pick and contrast, which one did you like better? Or are they just you know, two completely different things that you can't really compare them? What you just said. They are two completely different things. Very rare where I, this is very rare where I do this, all right? I would say in space. Oh, okay. I would say in space because uh, they, one of the best seasons. I mean, they, they, this is kind of the RPM treatment where the right. Sentai was this. And then our, our Power Ranger was that, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's, there's a lot of creativity in terms of, because there is a lot of space, there's spaceships, there are battles, and there's a lot of interesting characters like the uh, Ecliptor and those oh, suit designs. Ecliptor. And the fact that they turned this video game season into the countdown to destruction that closed and, and tied up all loose ends of our Power Ranger soap opera, it was, it was genius to me. So let me ask you about Ecliptor. Sure. Was he, because to me, he was one of the first villains with a heart of gold, essentially, because he, he was the one that raised Corona. Sure. Or I guess Astronom at that point. Surrogate father. Surrogate father. And he seemed like such an honorable warrior. And he was, man. And he, he but the thing is, you, I always expected in that season for him to do that turn of like becoming a good guy. But yeah. It never happens. And even, and you know what's really crazy? I'm glad you brought that up because moments before the Z wave finally cleanses the universe until the next season. He has this moment where he's really holding Corone or um, Astronema, yeah. a very, very brainwashed Astronema, not even really being herself, almost a cyborg, like basically being a Borg at that point. And just the, just the amount of care, it's like, how could you? Your own sister. Ecliptor was great, man. Yeah, Ecliptor was, Ecliptor was great. One of the best villains in Power Ranger history. Also, here's a nice fun fact as far as uh, the new Sentai, uh, Q Ranger. This is our first Sentai since Geki Ranger that actually has the full name Ranger in the title because we've had Gokaiger, Go Buster, um, you know, what else am I thinking? Kyoryuger. Ju Ranger? Ju oh, okay. oh, well, Ju Ranger's in there. 
But the, <coughs> but the point is, this is our first uh, Sentai since Geki Danger that has the full name Ranger in it. So, fun fact, fun fact. Fun fact for all you Sentai watchers, I'm currently on Kyuge right now. Matt, finish it up. Where you Almost. Almost. Uh, episode, like, 29. Let's put you on the spot. Now that you're getting further into the Sentai series, because we love we love Dino Charge. Yeah. We love what they're doing with Dino Charge, and we care about the characters of Dino Charge. With that said, how do you feel this treatment of Sentai compared to our Dino oh, Charge? Oh man, that's a tough question. You know, sure, like sure. back to the same answer that you kind of proposed is that they're both kind of different things. Sure. Um, like, because King is completely different than Tyler. Would you uh, say completely different? I well, mean, he's a lot. He, he's. They have a lot of similarities. They I have think. some similarities, but he's he, Tyler. Well, they're both free spirit guys. Very much. But Tyler's more composed. Yeah, King, sure. King's sure. just a, a caution, throw caution to the wind kind of guy. King is Goku. Like he is one of those. Hey, everything's fine. My friends call me King. Like, no, but Nasan and Coda are completely different. Sure. Oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I will say Ian, Ian, and um, Chase and Chase are very similar. They have some similar qualities, and they both call themselves the Hot Shots. Both Red Rangers. It's about to get wild. Yep. So that is consistent. Um, and so they share. Yeah, uh, Kendall's. There's not really Riley a counterpart. Riley and Sochi is like completely oh, yeah. different. Yeah, it, yeah. They're, they're different. But then That's also, but different. there's not really a Kendall counterpart, really. Yeah, you're right. But I feel like Kendall's way braver than Yahweh really kind of was. They kind of have similar roles because both of them are in the, in the, in, in the base. And, but Kendall is for sure head of operations, right. second to only uh, to keep her. Right, and, and she has this like schoolgirl crush, or not Kendall, but like Yahweh has a schoolgirl crush on King, you know, and then she was finding the files. But like, hey, King was the man. King was the man. King is the man. And then Ian was all jealous about it. It was great. He didn't know what to do. You know that one dude that has so much game and then they, get, they meet the one that they can't get? Yeah, that was that was definitely uh, Ian. So uh, King, King, get the ladies. Yeah, and then Ramirez, Onkidon. Ramirez Onkidon. is my he's my favorite actually. Ramirez, there's no counterpart Ramirez to Ramirez is in this. Great. I mean, Yudo can't even consider what, what was the dude's name, the the Violet Ranger that we saw this season, the um, older um, dude. Oh, 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 you know, you know oh, who I'm talking. I about. I do know who you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, what, what is his name? Albert. 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 That was our producer JD giving us the answer. Thank Albert. You, JD. So he, he, Albert is not a comparison of Ramirez. No, not at all. Ramirez is, is awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. I love Ramirez. Um, so, but more on Sentai, Bandai Premium has released their newest Ranger key set, the ongoing Ranger key sets. And honestly, if you're trying to catch up at this point, be ready to sell your child. So anyway, this commemorates the 2000th, 2000th episode of Super Sentai, the recent Zhuoger Gokaiju crossover, and the set pretty much revolves around the keys that they use on that specific episode. So we're talking about Ninja keys, uh, Kyoryu Pink keys, and Tokyo 4 key. What's interesting is Yellow Buster key was actually used on that show too, but it's not part of the set. Mm. So really interesting. It's retailed at 16,200 yen, which is about <laughs> which, is, which is about $162 for us, US, give or take. That's a lot of money. In inflation. Oh, it's actually cheaper. Than, it's, it's about where it is now. That's the sets. This is Bandai Premium. Okay, I'm really Bandai happy. Bandai Premium. I'm really happy that I didn't jump on the Ranger key thing. I'm in it too deep, man. I know you are. I'm in it too you're deep. It, I, you're you're this, way too This deep. is one of those things where I don't even look at the set anymore. If I know there's a Bandai Premium Ranger key, I call my guy, like, make it happen. Shout out to Marcus Frazier because that's exactly who I get it from. I, I'm definitely not. Toku Collectibles. I mean, listen, I, I am a collectible. And it's funny because right, right next to us is the comic bug yeah, where, yeah, where yeah. we do a lot of business. And um, they have the, the legacy figures. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was looking at the green and red, and I'm like, dude. Like I think, and, but then I'm, I, you know what? I'm just not gonna do it. You're not gonna do I don't it. Think so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change your mind. Honestly, I'm gonna tell the people right now. I'm gonna change Joe's mind because I'm doing it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm doing I'm, it. I'm, I'm a collector, but like my biggest item that I wanted, I have. You like the props. I like, I, I'm the, the communicator was given sure. to me as a gift from somebody very special, but yes, it was also like the white and green one is the one I want now. Like the white green one. Who are we thanking? Who are we thanking for that? Who put you on game as far as where to get it? You did. Thank you. The white and green, absolutely. I saw. I did see it at Toys R Us, by the way. That's my dog. So anyway, back to the Bandai Premium Ranger Key. It is expected to be released in February of 2017. 2017. 2017. So. Uh, now I want to get to the big, 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 big news. Which news is that, sir? That would be the news of the recasting of the Yellow Ranger, Chance Simpson. <gasps> now, before we get before we get crazy here, Chance was announced at Power Morphicon 2016. And uh, first of all, here's the thing that kind of broke my heart a little bit about this story. Say it's not so, Joe. It's so. It is so. Is that this was our first cast of the biggest diversity of Power Rangers we've ever had. And this is a, a little bit of like an insider thing a little bit. I was texting with one of the Power Rangers, with one of the, I don't know, 
one of the Power Rangers about this. Well, let me put it this way. Joe has it like that. <laughs> no, I don't know if put it like that. Uh, I, stand, I stand by it. Thank you to my Power Ranger friends out there. But yeah. like, we were texting la yesterday, uh, yesterday evening about this, and I, and I asked, I said, hey, so this is pretty crazy. Look what's going on. Yeah. Uh, he, he said that you know, he couldn't, well, I don't want to say he, but they couldn't say anything of what was <laughs> happening. And, uh, but the thing that kind of broke my heart about this a little bit was that this was our biggest diverse cast in Power Ranger history. Yeah, let's go ahead and recap. What was it before? So the Red Ranger was Okay, so Indian. the Red Ranger's half Indian, half white. Oh, half Caucasian. Yep. Uh, we have the Pink Ranger is Brazilian. White Ranger is. The White Ranger's half black, half, half white. white. And the Yellow Ranger was. Half black, half, black, half, half white. white. And we also got Peter Sidarso, which is, he's Indonesian. Indonesian. Sure. Um, so... It was a huge, diverse cast, which I thought was very uh, forward-moving. For it was awesome. Yeah, we were excited. We were talking about it. Right. We were like, man, this is exciting. They're progressing and continuing to progress. But back to what you were saying. So <laughs> the, the thing is, is that like, it's a little disheartening. However, yeah, yeah, yeah. JD was the first one that showed me, and this is, this is very interesting, too, because Chance did go out to New Zealand. We, but we know that Chance went out to New Zealand. They're already flown out. He was flown out. Sure. But I saw a picture of the, of the uh, what's the new actor's name? It's Nico. Greetham. Nico Greetham. Nico Greetham. There was a um, a picture that I saw of Nico. He said that he that when he got the job, and then uh, my producer JD said, "Well, do you think he's the Gold Ranger?" Right, right, right. And I said, sure. "I I don't. I he, maybe he is." Little because they they do tend to cast pretty early for anticipation to the Sixth Ranger. Right. So little did we know he's not the Gold Ranger. He's, he's the replacement. replacement for the Yellow Ranger. Right. And that I mean I don't want to put this out there too prematurely because I don't know for a fact. But it doesn't seem like Chance is coming back in any capacity to, to the show. It does sound like a complete replacement in its truest form. And actually, we actually have a, a history of Yellow Rangers being replaced. Yes. From one reason or another. I mean, we're never going to confirm or deny. Are we uh, I don't want to. That's kind of touchy. I don't want to say that. It was like it was, in casting, at least. It's in kind casting, of like, it's sure. the Yellow Ranger curse a little bit. At this point, I don't hate it, using the word curse. But it's like, an interesting uh, coincidence at this point, and I would. I wouldn't argue with you, man. I do think it's curse, curse-ish because okay, so we, but some of them have paid off in different ways. Like for instance, well, let's let's roll this down through the Power yeah, Ranger history let's, right let's now. Let's go through it. So, so the first one that comes to mind, first one that comes to mind is, is the pilot episode for Mighty Morphin, where Audrey Dubois was casted as the original Yellow Ranger uh, Trini. That's right. Okay, and then that something happened. I mean, we have talk as far as what happened. Well, that was a producer's choice, from everything that we know. Well, it was a couple of things. I mean, rumor has it either a discrepancy, not being happy, well, or point is. Yeah, th there's a lot of rumors out there, but everything that I know. And that's not our place. The point is, Audrey got casted. And she got she and she got replaced by, by Trini. I mean, I'm sorry, by Tui. Tui. Yeah. At which which we'll, we'll go down and history and as Trina. Trini. Tr as Trini. And, Trina. And, and, and what honestly, am I talking about? I'm an idiot. But the point is also, in addition to that, it is part of our history because if then if this didn't happen, if Audrey. If whatever happened with Audrey didn't happen, she's mm -hmm. still part of it because she's still part of the legacy. Tui came along, and that became the Trini that we knew and loved, and that became our original five core Rangers. That's right. Okay. But we also have another Yellow Ranger well, that was replaced. Well, well, go ahead. No, 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 please. Well, I know, and I hope I'm not speaking, I hope we're going this timeline, right? But I also know that um, Tracy Lynn Cruz was originally Pink Turbo. Did you know that? Ah, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh, so, uh -huh. so we don't. I don't know who was supposed to be yellow, but mm -hmm. I know Tracy was supposed to be pink, and sure. somehow down the line she became yellow. Okay. Which is another another interesting thing about yellow. So there you go. Yeah. But what I was gonna say is for Lost Galaxy, mm -hmm. Serena Vin Vincent wasn't the original Lost Galaxy yellow. Matter of fact, it was uh, an Aaron. Oh man, what was her name? Um, Aaron Sims. She was casted. She actually did film a single episode. Something happened. There's hearsay as far as, you know, this and that. She was replaced by Serena Vincent, and yep. she became our Maya, the Yellow Galaxy Ranger. So, and that one's, another Yellow. That one's not hugely spoken about either. Like no, that. no. It's one of those things when you come across it, you kind of go, really? Huh, I didn't know about it. So, for everyone who didn't know, now you know, and knowing is half of Power Ranger battles. Do we have another Yellow? Um, there's a couple of things. I think there was a, not as highlighted, but for instance, um, who played Summer in RPM? Oh, that was Rose MacGyver. I don't think she was the original cast either, and I'm sure our, our producer JD would confirm or deny that. But that's, that's another yellow, but it does seem interesting that a lot of yellows have history. That's right. So this casting news is, is shocking because 
Again, uh, Chance made his reveal at Paramorphicon. Here's another funny one. My yeah. good buddy Serena Vince, or Serena Vince. <laughs> my yeah. good buddy Ciara Hanna. Ciara Hanna. She didn't audition. She didn't audition for yellow. She auditioned for pink. Oh, is that right? That's right. She auditioned for pink, and they made her yellow. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's that's a fun fact there. What's up with these yellow rangers, man? I know, right? It's, it, it's, it makes it's me, interesting. It it's is interesting. quite. There, there's a, there's more, and I, and listen, we're not here to speculate on the reason why Chance isn't on, on the show anymore. Not our place. It's not our place. I'm so glad you brought that up, dude, because um, the fact is, we're going to continue to support Saban. We're going to continue to support Power Rangers. We're going to continue to support. And we want to wish Chance the best in his career, because Absolutely. the guy's mad athletic, and he, he, you know what, and I will say this, is that out of all the Rangers, I was told by previous Rangers that were there at the casting that he was one of the stronger mm. actors. Mm -hmm. So, good luck to Chance with whatever he does in his future. And sure. We're here to support what Saban's doing, and right now they have a direction. Uh, they have a new Yellow Ranger, mm -hmm. so we're going to be supportive of Nico also. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Welcome to the Power Ranger family, Nico. And for everyone out there, I implore you, keep supporting Power Rangers because ultimately we love this stuff and we love talking about this stuff. Yeah, and, and we're and not we going to grow up on this. Stuff. And and the one thing, the one something that like we we hate talking about the Power Ranger drama because there's a lot of it. And, I feel and like every fandom has it though. It does, absolutely. Every, every fandom has it. Absolutely. Sure. But yeah. for us, we're gonna we're gonna try our best to keep our hands clean of that stuff. And uh, yeah, wipe wipe them clean. Got the towel. Yep. Um, what we what we're gonna do is is talk about the positives of the show and what it brings sure. to us as adults and as people that just love the show. Right. We're listen. When you talk fans, mm -hmm. you're talking right here. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, but sir. let's talk about our little top list here. Okay. So okay, there's a lot of could have been and, and you know possibly even should have been with with casting replacements and it, what would happen if this person would have done that so the casting news kind of brought up the whole what ifs and should have been so we have a list of should have been or could have been could have been rangers yes sir could have been so rangers. let me start it off we have i think we have six this time around um let me start off with this spike what what if spike became the gold ranger in samurai the reason I bring that up is because Spike's actor originally auditioned for oh, Gold Ranger. I didn't know that. You know, I went yeah. I went out with him one night at a, at a Lucky Strike Bowling. JD That's was there. I, that was good. So what if they combine the two options and maybe you know because Vulcan Skull never really got that call to Rangerness outside I mean, of a hey, and, the and there's a comic book actually in the in the Boom Studios comic book. No spoiler, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Late. There's a little thing that <laughs> happens with Vulcan Skull becoming Rangers. They did have the one episode where they morphed with the burger and the hot dog, and they they were in the Megazord. Yeah, yeah, Do you yeah, remember yeah, that? Yeah, so yeah. they yeah. You know, so we didn't really have anybody in the Vulcan Skull family become a Ranger and Ranger up. So that's 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 a that's a possible little coulda woulda shoulda. How about Devin? becoming Triassic Ranger in Dino Thunder. You know, this is neither confirmed or denied. Now, here's a, I, I remember the, 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 the when rumors, Dino, right. Dino Thunder was going on, Triassic Ranger. I remember the rumors about him being a separate Ranger. From Red. From Red. But I could never see it being Devin. It would have been super interesting. It would have been, because Triassic was pretty boss. Triassic had the whole motif and he had the whole design. And right. He had the... He was the closest thing that we had to, to like the White Ranger, Ranger kind of. Yeah. I mean, it, we only had five on the show, unless you count the double White Rangers, the good and the yeah. bad White Ranger. That was a technicality, but White Ranger's the sixth. So yeah. what are you going to do? You want to do our number three about the, the in space? Yeah. All right. So in uh, number three, uh, Justin going in space with the t uh, Turbo Rangers and becoming the Blue Ranger and TJ staying the Red Staying Ranger. the Red Ranger, no, which here, means no Andros. Here's something interesting to me. Is that, and I love the character of Andros. Sure, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I also love the character of TJ. Personally, uh, it, it was a little strange. I, and it, maybe that wasn't our first demotion from Red. I don't even want to consider that. Not a demotion, demotion just, just a switch. But it was our first time, it wasn't the first time we had uh, Red go to Blue. Correct. So, he's, I, he's referring to Rocky being the Red Rocky, Ranger, yes. becoming Zeo Blue Ranger. I think that I'm happy with the way the story actually played out. Sure. That's one. That's one. Would have or could have that I'm glad that didn't happen. And that's fair. And we did have the episode where Justin mm -hmm. did reprise his role and got the turbo powers, mm -hmm. and they had the little the little match. And I also felt like that was the shift too of Turbo getting into more of like a it, it, that Turbo definitely grew up with its audience in space. I feel like sure, it, sure, that, sure. That it, it was getting the payoff of, of uh, Ranger fans that had been through there for Mighty Morphin. Man, this is really coming back to me because honestly, Andros was almost more of a six than Zane was. He was absolutely. He was, he was, the he loner, was a loner. He was trying to fit in, trusting, yep. and really trying to figure things out. Where Zane was almost the opposite. Zane like em embraced them. Yeah, right Zane away. was the cool surfer dude with the frosted frosted, frosted tips. You gotta gotta live the nineties. That's a nineties. Yeah, that was Fox early two thousand, late nineties. Yeah, that's what happens. 
So uh, I guess we'll bounce back. This one is more than speculation. This one kind of has a little bit more support as far as this kind of was supposed to happen and it went a different direction. And this is Cassie becoming the new Galaxy Pink Ranger after... Yeah, Corona. Per, no, I'm sorry, Corona. Um, Kendricks. Kendricks. After Kendricks, unfortunately, had to, to leave the show because her, her actor... Um, uh, leukemia. Had, had leukemia, correct. Um, uh, Valerie, Valerie, Valerie Vernon had leukemia at the time. She was diagnosed with leukemia, so she had to exit the show. So originally, Cassie, Patricia John Lee, was brought on. And that's the reason why... I mean, they were going to have the crossover episode anyways, but that was the gate to having... Cassie, you know what? The pink powers. I actually know some insight into this story a little Please bit. Sure, man. Um, so here, th what happened was uh, that was that's absolutely one hundred percent true. Yeah. Uh, what happened was that she wanted to stay on for the full season, but she also wanted a pay bump. Uh, now we're getting into the power range technicalities. Yeah, yeah, we're getting into the technicalities. But, but it, what happened is that she obviously wanted to raise for being on the season previously. She wanted to be a regular. Right. She wanted to be a, a regular. As opposed to a guest. Or... Exactly. And 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 that's essentially how it broke down. Sure. And once they weren't willing to give that, then it became um, Melody Perkins' role, 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 role at that point. And that was kind of cool for the uh, the character arc of Corone. Which which I thought played out better. And Astronomer. It I played out better, awesome. but you can tell that if you actually go back and watch that team up, you can see the setup where Patricia or uh, Cassie is definitely meant to take over. Definitely meant to take over that spot. The powers, yeah. And ultimately, that was our first season that had a ranger death, but technically she came back at the end too. Oh, that's definitely a ranger yeah. death. Yeah. Well, she came back at the end of the season. Came back like nothing. Said, "I knew you guys would be fine." Man, but how impactful <laughs> was it when that actually happened, though? Oh, I was tripping. That was crazy. Though. They even did the Jedi Force Ghost thing where she was part of the Quasar Saber, and she's like, I'm totally fine. I'm like, you're dead. But it's okay. I will always be with you. You're flying out into space in the Saber. But that, it was well handled. It, yeah. was, it was emotional. And they had this whole thing with the Cycle Rangers again. Oh, my favorite. Yeah, absolutely. So that was a big one. That was a big one. Do you want to mention this what if? Yes. Jason Trini, Zach... Never leaving the show. Ooh. What would have happened? That's what, a, what would have happened? How, well, there's a, there's a few things that we have to figure out here. Talk to me. Because, number one, mm. I mean, we obviously at that point would have had the White Ranger, which, which wouldn't have really affected much. Sure. But Tommy would have never become the leader. For the record, that was a complete rewrite after the original three left the show. You can tell, but please continue. Yeah, so definitely Tommy would have never been the leader. Yep. I don't know how they would have handled the Ninjetti powers. And, speaking of Ninjetti powers, how would that affect the movie? I mean, obviously, they would have stuck around for the movie. Of course. Yeah, yeah. And, man, so many things would have been different. You gotta think, how would Zeo have been handled? Yeah, would Tommy have came back as gold? Would Tommy have came back at all? Uh, can, can, sorry. Would Tommy come back at yeah, all? Yeah, really excited there. I did. Kiss my ass. So, <laughs> but no, how about Brad Hawkins? That's a great one. So, Brad Hawkins was originally supposed to be the White Ranger. Mm -hmm. Did not happen. Uh, Tommy, Tommy stayed on Power Rangers when he was supposed to go to VR Troopers instead. And he was also supposed to be the Gold Ranger. So Brad Hawkins definitely has a history with being in the Power Coming Ranger Coming close, but no cigar. And he, but at least he did technically become a Ranger because he at least voiced the Gold Ranger while he was, uh, but he while he was but, helmeted. No, not, but he only did it, no, correct me if I'm wrong. Sure. He only did it up to the point where Jason, until Jason took over. That's correct. And so, then after that, did did the char the, the the actors that played the, the triplets did they voice Trey when he would come back in the helmet? I, 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 as far as I know, and again, you guys can let us know if you guys know. <coughs> but as far as I know, Brad Hawkins is Trey of uh, Triforia. The whole time. I think so. Even even when he's the triplets. I think they dubbed him a lot. Oh wow! I didn't know that. Because when you watch them talk, it's a very monotone type of speech pattern and it's very consistent. Interesting. I'm not even sure if the triplets even really use their real voices. That's really interesting. I'd love to hear so, I'd love to hear comments if, if that's right or wrong. Because I would love I don't know that I didn't know that. Yeah. So there's a lot of who would have left the show. Would have would they have left the show? Would they have made it all the way to Turbo? Would Turbo a Power Rangers movie, the best movie ever made in life, ever happen? Would that was, that was just on HBO Family actually. Was that? No, it's on all every morning. Is it as awesome as you remember it? I love that movie actually. See, really? Oh yeah. Uh, it's, it's an, it's an, you, uh, listen, I'll tell you why I love it though. It's like watching three episodes of Power Rangers just in one in one sitting. Without a, without question, but it was so haphazardly compared to to compared to the Power Ranger movie. You know what I'm saying? Okay, like, there's two. All right, have you went back and watched that Power Ranger movie? Yes. Okay. <laughs> let's let's be 100 percent real here. Be 100 percent real. 
the Zords in that movie, like the CG in that movie, okay. looking back now, it looks like, it almost looks like, uh, kind of like projects that you can make on your, like, oh, here's a special effect thing on YouTube. I don't know what that was on my phone. But here's a special effects thing on YouTube, and it's it looks really crappy. That's what that movie looked like. Showed up, man. It was amazing. I'm not saying I'm not saying I didn't like the movies. I love. No, the movie. no, no. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't age well. It you know what? I hear a funny story. I actually went to a event screening of that movie. Did you? Yeah, me, Daniel, our buddies, Daniel, who's also on hashtag show. Uh, um, our friend Tony and Fernando. We all went to this, uh, this screening together when we were kids. But we went to the advanced screening because it was mm. only here in LA, mm. so we got to see it before everybody else. And uh, it was one of the best. So I'm wearing this communicator now. We were all wearing our communicators that we got from Burger King. Mm. Or no, McDonald's. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, wow. You're taking it all the yeah. way back. We had the McDonald's communicators. And, and, and we all like wore them. And like, oh, it was so much fun. I love sure, it. Sure, it was, sure. It was such a great time. Well, the point is, how would the continuity change? Would certain actors leave at certain points? Would we even get a, a Tanya? Would, would, we wouldn't have a Karen Ashley. I mean, I mean but that even, that even even going on so forth, would they have continued through Turbo in space? Would it have everything. been the same cast all the way through? Would the transition be better? Would um, David, or I mean, I'm sorry, Billy, would he have left the show when he left the show? Would a different shade of pink still happen? Would there have been a Cat storyline? And you know, Cat was brought in specifically to take over for Amy Jo leaving the show. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sh uh, could have, would have, and would have happened because of the three staying on. So it changes everything. And it probably would have explained, the, because rumor has it, the, the turbo powers were explained a little bit better if, uh, if David Yost didn't leave the show. They would have connected the fact that he made, he, the, he made the, the, the turbo morphers. And the reason why he kept disappearing in Zeo was because he was getting it prepped for the new powers. So there's a lot of... But why wouldn't he put, give himself new powers if that was the case too? Which brings us to our number one though. Which brings us to our number one. What if Billy became the Phantom Ranger. I was going to say Zeo Gold. <laughs> <laughs> but what if Billy became any of those Rangers? Because obviously Billy was the MacGuffin of Zeo, where they were trying to narrow down who's the Gold Ranger. Who's the Gold Ranger? And he kept disappearing. And it had to be Billy. It had to be Billy. It's definitely Billy. It's not Billy. It's a guy. It's three guys. There are three guys that kind of look the same. Yeah. And it's now Jason. It's... So, so no Billy? Oh, I, 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 I think that he was oh. closer. I think that was, he was never supposed to be the, the Gold Ranger. Not for the show. Definitely not for the show. I think that the Phantom Ranger is definitely a possibility. That's my favorite, fan I guess, theory? fan theory. Correct. That's my favorite fan theory because I feel like if anybody would be it, it would be him. Coming from space, the, uh, the secret messenger, which means he had a thing for Cassie. Which means he, but what happened to the, what happened to the Aqua, um, the, the girl from Aquatar that he fell in love with. They, Why do you think he had to get that spacesuit? I had to get ready to get, get out of that uh, place. I'm just kidding. That's so cold, isn't that? That's so cold. Uh, no, who knows? I, I, it, listen, the Phantom Ranger can go a multitude of different kinds of ways, and, and I'd love to see that explored at some point. Hey, there is a Boom Studios comic book, so. Nice. I'd love to see it explored at some point. So those were our lists as far as should have and could have moments. If you have any should haves or could haves, please let us know in the comments below. But. Yeah, those, those were a few of ours. Speaking of comments Speaking below, of comments. let's get to yours from last week. I'm going to start it off with uh, our good buddy Edward Sanchez. He said, this was a fun episode to watch, obviously referring to last week's episode. My favorite part was when Poissandra, Kuro, and Fury try to uh, try to get the inner gems at Kendo. 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 Oh, you got excited. Kendall <laughs> was plotting the Plesio charge Megazord by herself. Piloting is, is, Piloting. is what that's supposed to be. Correct. Is uh, the Megazord... Uh, the Megazord by yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys are so freaking awesome. And Edward Sanchez, you're so freaking awesome. Hashtag Edward Sanchez approved. Uh, uh, Ten Denali you. Uh, not the episode of Dino Charge I was looking for. I'm so ready to see what exactly the Silver Ranger is up to. So am I. Can you say his name again? I said da Ten Dan Danny Lou. Danny Lou. Danny Lou. Is that? Oh yeah, Danny Lou. That's better. I heard Denali. Ten Dan oh, I said Denali. I've seen Denali all. I've been working. Oh, oh, I've seen it a lot this, this week. man is a busy man. I get it. You're still not going to get away with it. Uh, <laughs> Noah Fleming's command center blows up in the comic book. Shit a chain? Shit a chain. Oh, got in it. other words, money in the bank. He's buying it. Joe is converting people to buy the Boom comic I books. I hope you do because we'll get more stories. Yeah. Uh, for sure, for sure. Ryan Buda. We met, so we had dinner with Ryan. I don't know if you remember I this. do, I do. Great, great, great crew from, from uh, Ranger, Ranger Command Chat. Power. Yeah. Actually, they're, they're going to be in Long Beach this weekend. Or, well, I guess it's your Ranger Chat Power. Yeah, we're going to hang out with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hey, Joe and JD. D JD, I'm sorry. DJ. JD's right there. He, I'm looking at him. You're sitting next to me. You're DJ. Ryan here from Ranger Live Chat. Hope you guys are doing awesome. 
Uh, I hope we get the backstory for Kendall Miss Morgan during the remaining episodes. Agreed. Something you've talked about a lot. 100% agreed, yep. Uh, also, we hope that we can have you and DJ on the show of Ranger Live Chat in the future. Ranger which Live Chat, We yes. were saying yes already to this. Uh, keep up the good work. Love, love the Rangers Live Chat team. Oh, from the Rangers Live Chat team. Also, his favorite Savage moment is when the... Uh, Nadira. Nadira rejects Gluto. Gluto on a date on the beach from Time Force. Why don't I remember this? It wasn't a huge moment, but it stuck out. I mean, if you remember it, you're just like, oh, that kind of sucks. Man, I don't really yeah. remember it. Yeah, but, but good call. And just Suarez, Suarez my, lost, my uh, his most savage moment is Lost Galaxy, episode 17, Stolen Beauty. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, Shadow Bird 084. I really like the sister relationship between Madison and Vita Good one. and the Mystic Force. Oh, man, they're still giving us their Savage moments from two weeks ago. They're so great. excited for Savage moments. Um, <laughs> Madison and Vita and Mystic Force. My favorite is the Mitchell family, which was our number one. That was um, um, number two. Oh, number yeah, one. Right. Come on, right. you can't forget about Spike and Skull. That's right. Uh, although we got Kendall Chase... Although we got Kendall and Chase met Coda, yep. the rest is still in the dark, which we agree with. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to see the whole backstory. DJ, yes, sir. Carry us on. I would love to. All right, so we have Ranger Fan One Eight Nine Eight Zero. I feel like we should have got more of a Kendall backstory and more of an Ivan backstory because it feels like it's focused more on Tyler, Shelby, Riley, Chase, and Coda's backstory. We 100% agreed. We want to see how they all gel together in terms of Keeper, in terms of Kendall, and just how it really began. We want, we want the origin, origin, origin of stories for Dino Charge. We got a lot, we want the whole shabam, so agreed. Abigail Parker, again. Abigail Parker, you're the best, thank you for drawing me. You are pretty awesome, seriously, like, you, you are great. Uh, oh, she came up with this cheat, uh, sorry to cut you off. That's okay. On Twitter, she came up with this, like, cheat sheet for the, the quizzes I do for more from Mondays, and she has what? all, yeah, yeah. All the theme songs. It's amazing. She put. She really put time into that. It's amazing. I, so, I'll pull a picture of so it. So you were awesome, and then you went beyond awesome. Yeah, she's so great. You're, she's you're great. great. You're, you're really great. And speaking of great, she's letting us know that we rock. And thanks for reading my comment. It means a lot to me. Well, thank you for always being part of us. So yes. definitely. Yes. She liked the episode. It was kind of cool that they played the NZ Boys song again. Do you think the cast, especially James, sang it? Really? I mean, just the cast themselves. Do you think they sang the song? It's possible. I mean... If they could sing, I don't know. I mean, you said that. Uh, it sounded like One Direction to me. It did like, sound dun, very. We can't really say the lyrics because then we're going to get sued and, and we don't want our video taken off of YouTube. And we can't really dance because DJ is horrible. And I'm terrible at dancing, too. Never let me do that again. Thanks. Um, I agree with you that we need a Keeper Candle Chase background story. Yeah. And Not so much Keeper, because he looks creepy. I would love a Keeper explanation, even if you don't show Keeper. Oh, Rangers. We're moving on, because I I'm looking like, in the window. Like, cross, he's weird to me. You made me cross my legs. He's so weird. He's so you strange. You made me cross my legs. Not even, not even oh. funny. I thought about the possible plot points for the backstories. Uh, Spike and Skull for number one. That's really cool, and I agree with that. Yeah. Also, Team Zonda. Team Zanda. I wanted Plan Zanda to work so badly, and we agree with you because Team Zanda is great. Team Zanda. All right, so we have Blackwing2040. I love this guy. He's a great guy. Uh, man, I love these discussions. I wish I could do these with other Power Ranger fans, but most people always say that PR is for kids, but I don't care. I'm a PR fan till the day I leave this earth. Don't let anybody tell you different, man. Like man. what you like, sir. Like what you Listen, like. here's one thing we will always say to you. Talk something to that me and DJ always talk, talk about, to too, them. is that when you're a fan of something, yep. be proud that you're a fan of something. Because at the end of the day, we're all fans. We're all fans of something. And if yeah. anybody's going to hate on something, who cares? Like, if they don't like it, then they don't like it. But guess what? We're with you. We, we love this stuff. That's why we do it. And listen, if you want to send in a video question, you can be on this discussion with us. Do it. And hopefully, come out, meet us at a con. Dude, we'll talk Power Rangers with you all day. Nice. All day. Uh, we'll buy beers. <laughs> I'll buy beers. And, and we'll nerd out. And we'll and geek we'll out. we'll nerd out about this stuff. This is what we love. And just be proud. Just be proud that, you, that you're in this fan fandom. And, you know, we're with you. No need to be closeted. No need to keep it under wraps. I mean, the fact of the matter is, if people can love sports and people love their politics, you can love your own... Well, people need to care about politics, so whatever. But point is, if you love, if you have sports fans, if people can be sports fans, you could definitely be a nerd fan or a geek fan or be whatever part of geekdom you need to be a part of. So keep being a Ranger fan. Yeah, be proud of who you are. We're with you. Damn, th thank you. That, that's, that's what I love about Joe. I say 20 things, he says two words. Same thing. Well, that's like four, but... Who's counting? Um, I agree with you that we need the backstory. And, oh, wait, I'm reading the wrong one. Great. 
So his five mentor relative relationships is number, we'll go, we'll go backwards. Number five is Mac and his father. You hated that one. I didn't like the show. So number four was Scott, and we're talking about Operation Overdrive, by the Operation way. Operation Overdrive. Yeah, no. I love that theme song. He loves that theme song. I don't know why, it gets stuck in my head. Because it's terrible. Scott and his father, okay, from RPM. That was great. Uh, Nick, Udana, and Lenbo from Mystic Force. Yeah, that was a good one. The Mitchells, because the Mitchells are great, from Lightspeed like Rescue. And number one, Cam and Sensei from Ninja Storm. I hope Keeper's not related to anybody. Keeper's related to E.T. Uh, that would suck. Felicity Giles. If you actually think about it, Cam and Mia can't be related. Why? The only way that they could be related is if Mia was related to his father or to Lothor. Eh. I mean, Cam's, I'm Cam's mother uh -huh. uh, was, was only a Watanabe by marriage. So if Mia is a Watanabe, that means that she is a, relate, a relation to the Sensei or Lothor who were both Watanabe's by birth. But do we know if they ever had, I don't know, through marriages? I mean, just because there were only two- I mean, you're, you're saying like distant cousin. I'm saying like a cousin. Whereas, I'm not whereas saying this like, coming, uh, maybe uh, they, they may not be able, they may not be brother and sister, I but think maybe- Felicity's on or something here. Not, she's not wrong. She is she's not, not wrong. wrong. But so it's, not, it's not impossible. As far as her top five favorite um, relationships, they are, oh wow, this is all very similar to the last list we had. Hmm. Number five. Mac and Mr. Hartford. Mac and Mr. Hartford. Number four, Udana, Nick, and Liam Bowl. Nice. Number three, Jaden, Mr. Sheba. Yeah, but they're not related. Oh, Mr. Sheba. Mr. Sorry. Sheba. We're talking about the flashback, yeah, Mr. Yeah, yeah. Sheba. Got it. Number two, Scott and Colonel Truman. Mm -hmm. And number one, Cam and Sensei. Cam and so Sensei. my most favorite mentor moment has to be Cam and Sensei. Sensei was the typical overprotective parent, which is true. Yep. Uh, but understood Cam's need to express himself. And the fact that Cam was uh, never really, never really rebelled against it. His father just showed up and just trusted him and cared about him. Cam was an honorable son. Yes, absolutely, a hundred percent. This episode is uh, this this episode is one of their favorites. But at most, I seriously don't trust the Silver Ranger. We're getting a lot of that, not trusting the Silver Ranger because he was very suspicious. Because he sounds like Ninja. He doesn't. He really doesn't. <laughs> His request is that the Ranger send him the information for the Zords. The reason uh, for the distrust, absolutely uh, yes. foreshadowing, a hundred percent. The Rangers don't know all that much about the Silver Ranger, and suddenly they're down to give them the information on their Zords. No questions asked. Right? It's like somebody asking for your credit card information and your social security card, and you're like, hey, look, just take it. Hey, Joe, can idiots. I have your social security number? Stupid idiots. That's it, does not it? <laughs> that just seems like a little far-fetched, in my opinion, which I, I agree with. Sure. I understand if Keeper trusts him, and the Rangers are going off Keeper's trust, which I get, but even Keeper can be wrong. For all we know, this could be a trick. I mean, how do we know the Silver Ranger is legit? We don't. The communication could be pre-recorded, which I agree with. And if we had an episode today, we would find out, but yep. we don't, so we can't yet. Well, we'll find out next week, hopefully. Tom Cavern, Spike and Skull. Craven. Craven, sorry. Did I say Craven? You did. Craven, Craven. At least the Craven. Spike and Skull, no nice. Way. Honorable mention, RJ and I'm Master not. Finn from Jungle Fury. Our, anything RJ will never be wrong to me. DJ, close us out. Close us out. We have a pop. My that's your favorite. The best name ever for YouTube is Apollo Thunderflame. I shout, love it. Shout out to Apollo Thunderflame. He was feeling kind of sick. He's feeling kind of sick right now at the time of him typing this comment. So it's nice to get a little bit of ego stroking. The stroking he was referring to is the fact that I love his name, good. Apollo good, Thunderflame. Good, because that was a little weird. The stroking I referred to always started off like a weird sentence to me. Only, if, only with that attitude, sir. <laughs> so we have Derek Hervey. Hervey. Hervey, okay. Another more phenomenal review, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm super pumped, just like you guys, for the final episodes of Dino Supercharge. Question for Joe and DJ. Do you believe there will be more than one final boss fight? Not talking only about Heckle and Snide, but also the yet-to-appear villain. Ooh. Spoiler alert, we're not going to mention the name yet. So, even the possible return of Sledge for, from the first season of Dino Charge. Last note to DJ, super dope Red Ranger shirt. Where'd you get your, where do you get your Ranger clothing merchandise? Uh, so the first part, as far as the final fight, what do you think, man? What, how do you feel like it's gonna go? Do you think it's gonna be a one final fight? Do you think it's gonna be multifaceted? I hope it's multifaceted. You hope it's multifaceted. I hope it is, because I think those are the most epic episodes. I mean. We have a lot of villains. Yeah, we have a lot of villains, and I think they've built that up, and, I, and there's so many Rangers this season. There's a lot of Rangers. So I'd love to see fights on the ground, fights with Zords. And all these villains are strong villains, yeah, too. Yeah, and, and, and they're well fleshed out, too. They're well written. 100% agree. I do- Chip I, Lynn, thank you. Shout out to Chip Lynn. I do miss Sledge. 
I, I do, I do I miss Sledge. Sledge. As much as I like Snide, well, you know hate what? the name. I hate his name, too. But, but the reason I like Sledge so much is because he came off as a just a badass villain. He was. From episode one. Oh, you know what it is, dude? He came off the closest to me. I mean, not to the scale of his title. I think of I know being what you're going to say. Lord Zed. Yep. He came off super <coughs> just, I got this. You do what I say or be destroyed. I mean, and he already had his Rita Repulsa kind of bumbling fiance in Poissandra. So... You have to balance it off of the kids. Oh, Rangers! That's my profession of the Silver Ranger. <laughs> he sounds, that's how he sounds. Why did he sound old and decrepit? Oh, Ranger! Why is he old and decrepit? I need your Zord stuff. Why is that's he how, doing that's this he is. with his hand? That's what he reminds me of. Oh, oh, to answer your question about the Red Ranger shirt, that specific one was from a convention. I was out of some Abercrombie and Fitch. It, was it? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, I was like, hey, but it would have been news to me because I, I, I think it was an actual, an actual shirt they had at a Bandai booth or Bandai. It was at a convention. I actually don't remember where I got that, that specific shirt, but I'm glad you guys like it. It was a good shirt. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Jamel Pickett really loves the chemistry that we have. Thank you very much. Aw. Shucks. Aw. That's my boy. Oh, yay, cuddle buddies. Who is the toughest female uh, ranger? She, uh, they say it's between Jen and Tori. Who do you think is the toughest female ranger, man? Uh, well, Jen's a great choice because she's I feel like Jen's the there. obvious, though. I'm going to say Trini. Nice call. Nice call. I think Trini is, I think, honestly, in the comic book, they almost explain it, that she's, it's possibly she could be smarter than Billy. And You're definitely right. can definitely hold her own with Jason and, and Tommy if she if, if put in that position. She, you know what? She did keep up. So she more than kept up. She I mean, tra she uh, translated Billy too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Which I, if she so obviously she has the brains and yeah. the brawn I, and the beauty and the beauty. For me, for me, I, I think Trini's the best uh, female Power Ranger, like warrior, almost like they're like the Wonder Woman Power Ranger. She's the complete package. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know what? I I, I wasn't gonna. I was gonna say um, Lily from Jungle Fury, uh, which I love Lily. And to be mm -hmm. honest with you, she's gonna be top three or four for me. But you know what? I, I'm, I have to agree. I, I would say Trini, Trini Kwan. Shout out to Tui Trong for that. For, for that, uh, amazing, that amazing and portrayal. that's and that's so funny because we're. I mean, this wasn't planned at all, actually. No. But we. It's reverting back to our Yellow Ranger news. We uh, talked about yes. replacements and nothing against Aubrey, but we just didn't see enough from her. No. But Tui, she did. Such, one pilot. One yeah, pilot. one pilot. But Tui did such an amazing job. That it, it really made me believe, like, this is a girl that's beautiful, but could also, like, kick the crap out of guys. Like, yeah. Bolton Skull, yeah. if they, like, did something wrong. And it's like... In self-defense. In self-defense. And elegant. Yeah. And classy. And you respected her. Like, you Absolutely. respected her, her, her being, like, a warrior. So that's our, that's our toughest ranger, sure. in, in our opinion. So moving on to Craig Anderson. Um, would like to know who our top five hottest female Power Ranger villains are. We're going to put that list on hold for we one are, of these uh, other lists coming in the future. But you're going to get it. You're going to get it you eventually. You will get it, we promise you. But thank you for watching. I, I, I know... Astronomer's in there somewhere. Astronomer has been there somewhere. <laughs> thank you for watching. Uh, we didn't have an episode this week, so we hope we were able to f fill the void for our uh, Ranger wrap-up for you guys. Uh, we'll be back next week, hopefully, with a new episode. But if not, definitely with a list of more Power Ranger discussion. Uh, we might even come up with a list. Maybe we'll do that list if there's no new Maybe episode that list, that list uh, <laughs> next week. But until next time, I am Joe. I am DJ. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Stay up to date with everything trending in, in Geek, Geek Pop, Pop Culture. Culture.